What's up guys, I'm Amanda, the Botanical Burnett, and welcome to my channel. Today I'm going to be opening up my propagation box and I'm going to show you around, do a little propagation box tour, show you all of the plants that I have been propagating in this box and we're also going to be doing some propagation box maintenance. Basically, we're going to be cleaning it out, just kind of checking the roots on all these plants and seeing how they're doing. And I also will kind of be able to give you an insight on how to do a propagation box. If you don't have a propagation box, this is essentially how you're going to set it up. I'm going to go over what I use and basically, basically how I put it together. But it will be fun to see what plants I have in here propagating. And if you saw my last video, you'll see the little corms that I propagated from my Michelitziana. So I got this box at the dollar store. I used to use, um, and I still do, for smaller propagations, but I used to use like the takeout Chinese food containers. And I have been loving these just because they're bigger. I can fit so many more plants in this propagation box. So I'm basically going to take all these plants out. We're gonna see what plants are popping and what plants are doing good. Here is what I have in this propagation box. So pretty. You guys may recognize some of these plants in here. This propagation box also houses some plants that I have no idea what's in, what they are. I sometimes will get into these modes where I will propagate everything, I will chop up all my plants, and by the end of the day, I wind up finding like sticks in my sink, and I'm like, I don't even know what this plant is. It was probably one of the 10 plants that I propagated today. So I have random sticks in here that I don't even know what they are. They're like mysteries, they're kind of fun. Let's see what we have in here. Um, there's going to be plants in here that I'm going to be thoroughly surprised about because I don't even know. But we'll pull these plants out first and then we'll basically go into how to set up your propagation box. Let's start off with this Hoya Crimson Queen that is rooting a little bit. You can see like some of the roots up here, kind of small, but... I actually just put these in here. This is rotted off, so that is garbage. Throw that to the side. I actually just put these in here not that long ago, like maybe a week ago. And it's already starting to do something more than it did in the water. I had this in water for like, oh my gosh, like weeks and weeks and it did nothing. I even put a pothos with it, which is like a thing, like you're supposed to like put pothos with your plants, but it still didn't do anything. So this is also gonna show my shame. So I have this uh, beautiful plant here. This little baby leaf has rotted, so we'll pull it off. But I have this alocasia odora. This is what is remaining of my odora. I know, I had a beautiful variegated odora. It basically, what happened is it was probably just in too much of a brighter light and it just sprouted white, full white leaves. And then they eventually died and then I was left with nothing. And then I pulled the corn out, the corn was rotted. So I'm like, oh my gosh, it was just like a mess. But we have some roots, so that's great. I don't know why I sang that, but we have some roots on here. So that's so exciting. The plant, the plant, the leaf did rot. So I kind of just pulled that off. So then hopefully this stem will produce a new leaf. If not, then this will plant will die and I'll just not have a odora. It seems like it's still a little rotted. So what I might do, you can see like all that mush right there. It's like, ugh, it's gross, slimy. Ugh. Okay, so we might have to cut this. I might just like lob it off like right there, like right at the top of the first or the bottom root and just kind of go from there. What I like to do when I do that is I'll cut it and put cinnamon on it. So I will wind up having to leave for a second to go get that, but we'll take care of that when I, after I pull all these plants out and we do that. So we'll put this to the side so we can. Now these are some sticks 
like I had mentioned before, that have, I don't even know what they are. I actually think that this stick, this one in particular, that has a beautiful root, beautiful long root, I think this actually is my Monstera Penetapar, pen yeah, you know, I'll put it there. Um, I think that's what this is. And there's like a little, you guys can see, there's like a little, little nub right there. So a little leaf will be growing. Um, maybe I'll cut this off and just have that little spot. Um, just cause this isn't rooting. It's actually kind of mushy. So again, we're going to be doing some like maintenance on some of these cuttings. I don't uh, honestly look in this a lot. So I am literally finding these out as I'm going. <laughs> So yeah, this is exciting. Um, like I said, probably just cut it there, but we'll get to there in a second. So I'll put that near the alocasia. This, I don't know what it is. It may be another Monstera. I, I really don't know, but it's got, if you can see, it's got a little root and a little sprout. So we're doing good. I mean, I don't know. I don't know who you are, but. <sighs> and then this, I don't know what this is, but it's variegated. You guys can see the stem of variegation. So I'm guessing this has to be a Monstera Stanleyana. Um, not 100% sure, but we have two little leaves growing on it, so. That's a good sign. No roots though. That's the only problem. Eventually though, um, once those roots develop or once those leaves develop, they can turn into roots. So that's, you know, we're hopeful. We're hopeful for that. So this, I didn't even know that I saved this. Um, this has actually won. So huh, sad story last year, you guys know that I had thrips and they were, they overtook my life. So I got rid of a lot of the plants. I kind of was just like over it. I was like done. Any plants that had thrips on it that I wasn't attached to fully, like my big monstera, I couldn't let that go. I treated that thing like every week. Um, my philodendron wendombi wound up being infested. And this is what I have left. So I have a little window bee still with really good roots. So happy about that. I'll probably let him live in there for a while. Um, the roots are not, I mean, they could pot them, but like, I like them to be fully developed before I pot them at all. Um, but you know, my cute little window bee. I'm glad that I saved that because I honestly do. Didn't even realize that I did. Um, crazy. Um, so this is a new um, addition into my plant uh, collection. This guy probably won't survive. Uh, it started to wrinkle, like literally right after I got it, it started to kind of curl up and I tried to pull it out of the pot like gently and it just like fell off the root system. So it's a little rotted. Um, it has one node that could potentially be something. Probably honestly try to toss this, but my thought was I'm like, I have to try to root it. I always like, I, I sometimes get frustrated and I think about, I'm like, I'll throw them to the side. I'm like, I'm not gonna, I'm gonna throw them away. I have to at least try to revive them. And if they wind up dying, they die. And it's like, oh, well, I tried. So that's what I'm doing with these. This is actually gonna be the last time I've ever, I ever buy these. This is literally my last one of my last plant hauls. It rotted in that amount of time. Whatever, I'm just like, I, I know that like people are finding these, like Casa Farms has these like, they people are finding them at Walmart for like $10. I bought this for like, I don't know, like more than $10 for a three leaf cutting. I'm like, you know what? I'm just gonna, when I find that the big, big boy of this plant, I'll get it. But I just, I'm not having a good time with the Alocasia Silver Dragon. It's just not doing, 
it's not happy with me. So I don't know. We'll we'll figure it out. But again, I have a uh, where is you? Where are you? I have one little node <laughs> on their left. So hopefully I'll be able to revive it. But I just put this in here two, three days ago. So yeah. <sighs> I hate admitting stuff like that to you guys, but I guess that's like, I mean, you know, it's whatever, like it happens. Stuff like that happens. So this is a Monstera Stanleyana cutting. So pretty with a very long, very, wow, very long root. Very long root on that Stanleyana. Like, whoo, look at that. Damn. All right, so yeah, she's doing good. She's doing all right. Um, I've had issues with my Stanleyana. I always like to water propagate them and I just kind of stuck. This cutting was actually not doing great after I planted it from water. So I was like, screw it. I'm just gonna put it in my propagation box and I'm just gonna forget about it because I just like, again, with my, like my silver dragon, I'm like, I'm not gonna let it die and throw it away and not do anything about it. So I'm gonna try to root it, but I'm gonna throw it in my propagation box and forget it. Set it and forget it. And that's the best thing about this propagation box is it sits like out of the way. I can't even like, I can't even really see it 90% of the time. And I forget about it sometimes. So it's kind of nice because I don't helicopter over it, but cute little or why, why do I keep saying alocasia? Monstera Stanleyana cutting. Very pretty. All right. So I also have this. Oh my God. Okay, hold on, Alocasia. You're not, you're not coming yet. Okay, okay, guys. Oh, look at the, look at the flipping roots on this thing. Like what? Okay, you're doing the most. This plant is doing the most right now. And of course, this is a uh, Syngonium Albo. Beautiful little Syngonium. This is actually a kitchen sink cutting. I didn't know what it was. And then eventually I'm like, oh yeah, it's an alocasia. Why do I keep saying alocasia? It's a Syngonium Albo, super cute, whatever. And I just left it in here. I'm like, I don't care. I don't need to plant it. Um, but this is like a monster. I think you're ready to be planted. I mean, what do you guys think? Let me know in the comments. You think this is ready to be planted? <laughs> I think so. I mean, it's like so much root. Um, yeah. So we may not put her back in here. We may just plant that back into the Syngonium. Put her back with her friends. And it looks like there's two stems here. Yeah. Ooh, careful. Yeah, there's two stems here. And they both have pretty decent variegation on it still. I mean, this one's really good, but like, they still have decent variegation on it. So um, they're welcome to go back in that pot. I also have a non-variegated uh, version of my Syngonium, um, it's just like Syngonium green. It's just like reverted pieces. Um, every once in a while I'll go through and I'll just snip off like any green growth to kind of promote the better growth and yeah, super cute. I'm really excited about that. So we're gonna put this to the side because that's gonna need to be potted. The last plant I see in here, which we may find plants as I go, but this is one of my Alocasia Zabrinas that I have been rooting. And it is rooting really nicely. Look how good that, look, look how nice those roots are. The plant's a little wonky. <laughs> like, what are you doing? But look how, look how like stripey this stem is. And it's like kind of got like a fat back, so. Honestly, I could plant this, but I really want to make sure that this has got 
a really good root system before I plant it. Even the um, the smaller like allocation of Sabrina that I got is in moss in a planter because I want to make sure that the roots grow better. And honestly, I might keep it in moss. There's nothing wrong with keeping plants in moss. You can grow plants in moss. Just make sure that you like, you know, flush out the moss every once in a while and this and that, but there might be plants in here. I have no idea. And then, so that little Zebrina is ready to go back in there. And then in here, I have both of these Trying to see if I find any plants. I have this uh, little Alocasia Michelitziana corm that we planted last video. And like I had told you guys before, I kind of put them in there and they haven't done anything yet, but we'll just kind of keep them covered and keep them, keep them really, really good in there. So the moss in this feels fine still. It still is fluffy, it still is good. Um, but for educational purposes and for science, I'm going to put this in, I'm gonna pre-moisten it like we're just starting out fresh. That way anybody who's wanting to do a propagation box will have the know-how to do that. So I'm going to wind up just putting all of this moss in the water and we're going to pre-moisten this yet again. I also want to flush it if there's any like algae or anything growing in here. I mean, I've had this propagation box for, I got to say, several months and I have not cleaned it. <laughs> so I don't even know if that's honestly. I'm doing this video, but I don't even know if that's something that people normally do. So we're just gonna really just moisten that up again. I'm not gonna let it sit, it doesn't need to soak because it's already pretty moist. It's just kind of re-moistening. But we'll just toss all that in there. I also wanted to do this video too, just to like check in on all of my propagations and see how they're doing in the prop box. The prop box, honestly, I will tell you right now, is a miracle. Like, it is a full-on miracle. So then you're just gonna like squeeze out that moss as much as you can. You might feel that the moss is, you're like, oh, that's way too dry, that's fine it's not going to hurt the plant at all, or it's not gonna, it's not gonna dry out because when you put the lid on, I mean, and I have a propagation, like I have this container from the dollar store and it still holds humidity really well. I could do like a sealant around the top, um, but I haven't needed to. I mean, like I said, I've had this propagation box going for a while, like a couple months and I haven't needed to do this. I really honestly didn't need to do this, but I'm doing it just to kind of show you guys like how to start a propagation box and stuff like that. Now, this is just plain old water, plain old tap water. You can add like your, like you can add nutrients to it if you'd like. I would recommend that if you wanna keep your cuttings in here long term. Um, you could always use like things like Super Thrive, or you could use liquid, liquid dirt. Um, those are all good things to kind of add to your moss. Just to give your plants some like nutrients and stuff like that. And then after you rinse the moss out, you'll want to just kind of like, just fluff it out. Just make it really nice and fluffy and You can also opt in too if you are, if you have moss. Moss isn't the most sustainable thing ever. Um, a lot of people are kind of not doing moss as much because of the fact that, you know, it's not super sustainable. It's not great for the environment. Like it takes a long time for the bogs to produce sphagnum moss again. 
Um, so if you do buy some, don't throw it out. You can boil it. You can sanitize any of this moss. Um, so just make sure that you don't like just toss out the moss if you have a propagation box that you, you don't want to refresh or anything like that. It's probably good, good practice to kind of flush them out every once in a while. So then we have this beautiful dirty water that we're going to keep to the side and that is kind of what has flushed out of this sphagnum moss. So now we're going to actually put this down because I'm clumsy and I will definitely spill that. We're going to now put these cuttings back. So when you're planting cuttings in your sphagnum moss, like I want to make sure that I have an area where I can put these little jars back in. I would recommend if you are doing any corms or anything like that to put them in jars um, or you will have, they will get lost in this mess. So I like to put them in little cups or jars or anything like that just to make sure that they're not gonna get lost in the sauce. You know, they're not gonna get lost in this mess of moss and you'll be able to kind of find them easily. There's a couple things you can do when you wanna get organized in your propagation box. You can kind of stagger them. Um, you can basically just kind of stagger the plants randomly. You can place plants as like, so like for instance, I can put like all my allocations in an area all my Hoyas in an area and so on. Or you can just kind of willy-nilly just throw them in there. I kind of try to be a little bit organized when I do it. So for instance, like this stick, I'm actually gonna just snap it. All right, you guys are probably like, sh like shrilling at me right now, but I just wanna make sure that I just have that little guy. So you'll wanna kind of open it up enough where there's a little bit of moss at the bottom but some you can just kind of bury any roots or any nodes and for that stick i want to make sure that that little that little like nub is sticking out and it's not buried in the moss not a huge deal if it is but it's just good so you can kind of see the growth and then you just want to stick everything down in their nodes down just to make sure if you are not ha don't have any nodes you can even just place like a one strip of moss over the top of the nodes i do that and i i don't know if it does anything but i feel like it does so those are like my little sticks over there for the hoya i'm just gonna kind of just shove it in there um i don't really care about this honestly if it roots or not. I have a big enough Hoya Crimson Queen. I just, they just were not doing anything in water. So I just wanted to make sure. <sighs> I'm gonna start putting the allocations together. So I kind of know. So I might put them closer to the top, but you wanna just kind of plant them in here. So this little Windombi, we're gonna plant that in there. Make sure all the roots are buried. You don't need to like pack it down or anything like that. You can just kind of like put the moss over kind of just loosely. That's totally fine. Um, this monstera I'll probably put over here because those are probably monsteras. So just make sure the roots are down in there. And I like to like tuck it in like good night, <laughs> go to sleep. Um, so these are going to be planted. Um, I probably will actually do this off camera just to plant them in. And then these, so I might want to put my Zebrina maybe closer somewhere, not like kind of a farther away from the other ones. Cause if those two are rotted, I don't want them like close to the one that's not rotted. So we're just going to, tuck in the roots down there and just now it, for the zebrina i'm gonna have to kind of like shimmy it down to have it lay down um if you kind of notice it's already kind of wonky because of that it's not super tall it's kind of too tall for the propagation box but what it's whatever um this guy is probably fine to just put in here it's actually like 
when I planted it, it was kind of soft and I can feel that the, I mean, this leaf will probably go, but um, I can feel like it feels like it's, it's uh, retaining some moisture, which is great. So we'll just kind of tuck that in there. And then for this Odora, again, I'm going to cut it off about right there and then plant it into the moss. Um, I don't really want any more of that like nasty stuff. It's just, I don't even know. It's, it's really gross. So I just actually just wiped it out. So I don't really need to cut it because the rest of that is hard. It's not soft or anything like that. I don't know. I mean, we're going to put her back here away from the Zabrina. I can kind of just make sure that some of the roots may start to form on that alocasia. But then that's it. I mean, that is basically how simple it is, guys. Like all you need is just a box you can use a chinese food takeout box if you have a couple again i used to use that i just kind of transitioned over to this just because it's bigger but i got this at the dollar store like this is just a dollar store container and it has been so good for me like it has just been super good like surprisingly because you know the dollar store is like a hit or miss but here is my prop box. Everything kind of planted back up in there, even the little corms. And then, like I said, you just kind of throw the top on, set it and forget it. Just put it away somewhere. Um, make sure that it does get a, a little bit of sun. Like I would say like medium bright light area. That is it. Like that is how you do a propagation box. So basically for me, I was just doing maintenance on it. Just making sure that the moss was kind of wet, but that's basically it. I mean, it's really easy to get started and I'm telling you, it's like a miracle. It is like stupid crazy that it has basically like revived so many of my plants. Like I thought that Alocasia Zabrina was a goner. Like I always thought it was like, oh yeah, well, whatever. It's one of those things where it's, it's kind of funny because this is like my last resort. So like I'll put the cuttings in there that I'm just like, I don't even care. Like, I don't even know like the, the silver dragon. I'm just like, if it roots, it roots. If it doesn't, whatever, I don't care. And nine out of 10 times it will root. So I've had a few plants in there that have rotted, probably would have rotted regardless if I put it in water or whatever. So yeah, so that's basically it. If you guys have any questions or comments, concerns or whatever, <laughs> let me know um, in the comment section. I would love to discuss like if you guys have wanted to do propagation boxes or you have any tips on like propagation boxes, please share that with me and like everybody else. That would be kind of cool to see like if you have any tips on like what you do. But yeah, like it is just so fun to just like have a little humidity box. I mean, basically that's essentially what it is like, you know, a humidity box. And I think that's why fruits grow so well in there is because it's, you know, high, high humidity. One tip that I did want to mention when you get a box or when you're putting plants in just to make sure that it doesn't touch the top um it can some sometimes it can touch the top of it and it will be okay but i've noticed that i've had a few cuttings that will be rooted really well and as soon as it touches the top that leaf might start to rot so just keep an eye on that and just make sure that the plants aren't growing like to the top of it. If they are, you may want to need to like plant them in deeper or you may need to repot them. As far as like moss goes, like, you know, propagation with moss for me has been really successful. I mean, it's the only way that I've grown corms. It's the really the thing that has saved a lot of my plants. If you guys seen my, uh, my Gloriosum video, I have a philodendron glorio so i'm kind of rooting in a bag just a pla like just like a ziploc bag full of moss and that is doing so well um i'll do a 
update video here shortly on that when I have a little bit more to update. It's just, it's just such a good propagation medium, a growing medium. You can add anything to it. Like I said, you can add like Super Thrive or Liquid Dirt to your water and just really have a good nutrient moss for it to grow in. Also moss is really good. It transitions really well into soil where if you're growing plants in water, I do a lot of water propagation, but when you root plants in water, it tends to be a little bit harder for the plant to adjust to soil. I found that a lot of times when I do water propagation, if I don't put them in the right soil, the right like moisture of the soil and all that stuff, it winds up root rotting. So just be careful of that, but I've gotten a lot more success with moss propagation. So that's just something to think about, just something to kind of keep in the back of your mind. But that's it for today. Let me know in the comments if you guys have a propagation box or if you don't, let me know if you're gonna start one. If you guys do start a propagation box after this video, Find me on Instagram and tag me in your propagation box. I would love to see it. Like it would be so cool to see like all these propagation boxes. Um, I know this is not a new thing, but it's definitely something that I have started doing and it's just literally magic. So thanks again for watching. I hope you guys all have a great day and stay botanical.